unknown, Zulu 445. Roger, understand, all launch from the Soviet Union. Roger. Roger, understand, side report valid, enter valid, and stand by for sync no assessment. Good, enter the valid. Sir, the valid is in the system. General, at this time, we have indications of a launch from the Soviet Union. The side report is valid. Sir. show at the White House. The sirens have just gone off all over Washington, as you can probably hear. There is every indication that something has gone terribly wrong. There is a tremendous amount of activity going on at the White House, but I'm unable to convey to you any of what's going on. Nobody... West Berlin, 1989. A half city of over two million people and an outpost of the West situated 100 miles behind the Iron Curtain. It is surrounded by the communist state of East Germany and sealed off from its neighbors by the infamous Berlin Wall. Here in the heart of a divided Europe will unfold the events that ignite the Third World War. Behind the facade of its status as a military superpower, the Soviet Empire faces a deep political and economic crisis. Within the Kremlin, a fierce debate rages between those who dream of turning back the clock and those like Mikhail Gorbachev who are responding to the winds of change. We're talking about massive scale reforms, not details. If we don't plug into the people, if we don't listen to them, we'll never solve this country's problems. If we don't reform our political system, perestroika won't work. We can't solve our problems with old solutions. Meanwhile, in East Germany, discontent with the hardline communist regime of Erich Honecker is growing more vocal. The East German secret police, the Stasi, are unleashed on the demonstrators. In September, thousands of East Germans, fed up with life under communism, stormed the West German embassy in Prague, seeking asylum. Before the exodus is halted, over 20,000 East Germans make their way to the West. <laughs> Ich will gar nicht bestreiten, dass wir damals ernste gesellschaftliche Probleme hatten. Nur als wir gerade dabei waren, Lösungen zu erarbeiten, da kam der Genosse Gorbatschow daher, zum 40. Jahrestag der DDR. Der Zeitpunkt war natürlich denkbar ungünstig. 
Es war doch ganz offensichtlich, dass er vor allem diese Unruhen angeheizt hat. Seine Anwesenheit macht alles nur noch schlimmer. Many in East Germany have pinned their hopes on Mikhail Gorbachev to set the communist leadership on the path to reform. The Soviet party leader is seen as their last and only hope. At this critical moment, Gorbachev's international political influence is on the line. Erich Honecker, like most of the aging leadership in Eastern Europe, remains lost in the old communist rhetoric of the past. Lass ich die Deutsche Demokratische Republik an der Westgrenze der sozialistischen Länder in Europa als Wellenbrecher gegen Neonazismus und Chauvinismus bewährt. Wie die Sowjetunion, die uns befreit hat, wird die Deutsche Demokratische Republik zum Jahr 2000 diese Schwelle mit der Gewissheit überschreiten, dass nur dem Sozialismus die Zukunft gehört. Und das? Und das alles nur, weil wir friedlich demonstrieren. Wir wollen nichts schlecht. Wir wollen hier was Я думаю, опасности только подстерегают тех, кто не реагирует на жизнь. А тот, кто воспринимает импульсы жизни, общества и трансформирует их в соответствующую политику, того трудности не должны пугать. Это нормально. Спасибо, до свидания. These images of Gorbachev's departure from East Berlin are the last the world will ever see of him. His ultimate personal fate is not known. We don't know that. We don't know that. Uh, clearly, some of the hardliners have been concerned about the rapidity of, re of reform. They've been concerned about the uh, demise of the Communist Party per se. And uh, it's, uh, I think they've also been concerned about uh, the Soviet economy. But uh, I've said over and over again that we did not want to see a, a, a coup backed by the KGB and the military, and apparently that is what is underway. There have been violent street battles in Moscow throughout the night. Opponents of the coup have fought back bravely with rocks and Molotov cocktails. They are no match, however, against the heavily armed forces of the Soviet Interior Ministry, the so-called Black Berets. It is unknown how many people have been killed or wounded, but local hospitals are reporting hundreds of casualties. By dawn, the Soviet army has seized control of the city. All opposition is driven underground. The fate of the Soviet Empire is now in the hands of one man, General Vladimir Ilyanovich Soshkin. In Bonn, West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl reflects the feelings of many in a direct appeal to the new Soviet leader. We are waiting, and I will this personally very strongly underscore, that the personal unforeseen of Michael Gorbachev Видите ли, для нас это была не просто политическая проблема, это был вопрос выживания нации. Несколько поколений советских людей трудились, чтобы превратить нашу советскую родину в супердержаву. 
И вдруг в один прекрасный день мы просыпаемся и видим, что радостно улыбающийся товарищ Горбачев ведет нашу страну в пропасть. Увы, но это было именно так. Боюсь, что он сам навлек на себя свой рог. At an internationally televised press conference from the Kremlin, the world gets its first glimpse of General Sochkin. He leaves no doubt that the era of Glasnost and Perestroika is over. Товарищи, дамы и господа, мы искренне скорбим о жертвах последних событий, но мы были вынуждены предпринять эти меры для спасения Советского Союза от гибели. Стоящий перед нами кризис является результатом безответственных действий ревизионистов и предателей, проникших в самые верха нашего партийного и государственного аппарата. Мы призываем братские социалистические страны, члены Варшавского договора, немедленно принять меры, необходимые для возвращения к миру и спокойствию. Uh, I'm afraid now we have the hardliners in charge, and that's bad news for the Soviet people, as I said. It's bad news for our relationship, and I think it's pretty bad news for all the world. Our relationship with the Soviet Union is fundamentally changed. I think you're going to see that in the movement in Congress toward most favored nation status and trading with the Soviet Union. That's dead. Well, the word that we had been getting from the CIA about General Sashkin was disturbing, to say the very least. He represented what we call the old guard. Now, you see, these were guys who had been spending their whole life in building up the Soviet state. So they were in no mood for Big Macs and MTV, let alone an opening in the Iron Curtain. So then, these are the facts about General Sashkin as we knew them at the time, and as I reported to the President in my briefing. Legend has it that he was among the group of soldiers that raised the Soviet flag over the Reichstag in Berlin at the end of the Second World War. Well, <laughs> at least that's the story he liked to tell. At any rate, we do know that he stayed on with the Soviet occupation forces there. And he probably was involved in a very brutal crackdown of a workers' uprising in 1953. There are a lot of good people who were gunned down in that. As far as we know, he never married, but uh, there's very little known about his personal life. Now, Sashkin received a certain degree of notoriety in 1968. And he led a particularly ruthless armed battalion onto the streets of Prague to suppress the so-called Prague Spring in Czechoslovakia. Now, by this time, this type of work has sort of become his specialty, you might say. At any rate, he got his picture right on the front of Life magazine. <laughs> Well, as you can see, it's not a very flattering portrait. Sometime around, oh, 1982, he was appointed to the Politburo and assigned to the Interior Ministry, where he seemed to have absorbed a lot of nutty ideas that were circulating around there, including one enormous bit of crap that there was some master plan that was being engineered by the British and the Americans to destroy the USSR. I mean, Jesus. My impression was, here is a guy with his finger right there on the nuclear button who was, um, well, shall we say, not exactly playing with a full deck. Well, the president was sitting there and just growing a little bit more agitated and more agitated as I was giving him his briefing. <laughs> well, I suppose nobody likes to hear bad news. Warsaw Pact leaders have been meeting in Moscow today for their first face-to-face -face discussions with General Sashkin, who arrived at the conference over an hour late and refused to have his picture taken. Among other things, we are told there has been heated debate concerning the success of the Chinese military crackdown in Tiananmen Square last summer. East German leader Eric Honecker in particular is reported to have expressed enthusiasm for a Chinese solution to the problems in Eastern Europe. On orders from the Kremlin, a crackdown is carried out in cities all across Eastern Europe. The actions of the security forces, however, succeed only in provoking further confrontations. Von 
gehört aus dem Rückblick. Da kann ich nur sagen, hätten wir doch eine andere Lösung gefunden. Aber den Sozialismus zu verteidigen, man so Auftrag. Wir waren ja schließlich vereidigt. Viele unserer Kameraden hatten leider nicht den Nerven für den, für den unappetitlichen Teil dieses Auftrages. Aber wenn der Westen nicht so viel Druck ausgeübt hätte, wären wir mit dem Problem schon selbst fertig geworden. Die Menschen in der DDR haben ein Recht auf freie Meinungsäußerung, auf eine freie Presse, auf freie Bildung von Gewerkschaften, auf freie Gründung von unabhängigen Parteien, auf freie, gleiche und geheime Wahlen. In East Germany, thousands of so-called subversives are rounded up and jailed. Others simply disappear. Among them, several of the more moderate members of the top leadership. Egon Krenz, once thought to be the most likely successor to Erich Honecker, is said to be in Moscow undergoing surgery. Hans Modrau, the local party chief of Dresden, is appointed ambassador to Mongolia. And Politburo member Gunter Schabowski, who openly expressed sympathy for Gorbachev, is, according to rumors, tried for treason and shot. West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl has arrived in Washington this evening for talks with President Bush. He is expected to ask for increased American military support in the event of a further escalation of the crisis in East Germany. I'm not trying to elevate any chance of military confrontation. Nobody wants that and I expect, I hope that that's true of the Soviet Union. This isn't the time to threaten militarily or to move forces around just to show uh, machoism. Well, that's not what's called for here. What's called for is diplomacy. It's called for, what's called for is commitment to principle, backing those people who are committed to reform. Now for the Chancellor, who, who's going for Chancellor Cole? Mr. Chancellor, what steps has your government taken to persuade General Sashkin not to intervene? den Verantwortlichen klar zu machen, dass eine weitere Eskalation der Gewalt, insbesondere der Einsatz der Truppen und Streitkräfte der Zentralarmee, katastrophal Erfolg haben. Wenn der Sosetzki Dom zergeriert hat, dann ist unser Dorf, um ihn zu schützen. Wenn wir das nicht tun, dann kann der Feuer sich verbreiten und sich auf unseren eigenen Dorf verbreiten. В этом нет ничего подозрительного. Элементарная логика. В определенный момент надо прекращать всякие разговоры и принимать меры. I was summoned to the White House at around 9 o'clock on November 14th. The Soviet ambassador had an urgent message from Sashkin that he was told to personally deliver to the president. He began by stating that the Soviet army was at that very moment moving to restore order in East Germany. And then he said that this was being done at the invitation of the East German government, that it was an internal matter and of no concern to the West. Grekov then added, and <laughs> this is something that I will never forget, that the Soviet Union would guarantee our free access to West Berlin. Well. You see, the not-so-subtle implication of this was that our continued free access to West Berlin was now a courtesy of the Soviet Union, and no longer our God-given right. I remember Jim Baker leaning over to me and saying, Martin, this is going to be one damn cold winter. The so-called Chinese solution is finally carried out. Frightened and inexperienced, the Soviet troops who are ordered onto the streets resort to a level of brutality that shocks even their own commanders. This amateur videotape of the killings is smuggled out and broadcast to millions around the world. Wir wussten alle, dass in den Seitenstraßen 
russische Soldaten standen, Gewehr bei Fuß. Wir haben uns irgendwie doch darauf verlassen, dass die nicht schießen werden. Naja, das war ziemlich naiv, also wenn man es von heute aus sieht. Wie viele dann wirklich erschossen worden sind, das, das weiß man ja bis heute nicht. Aber einige davon habe ich selbst gekannt. Da war zum Beispiel eine junge Frau, die kam zu den Montagsdemos immer mit ihrem Kinderwagen. Also sowas merkt man sich, das vergisst man nicht so leicht. Are you going to leave these children, these women, these defenseless people to a murderous dictator to have more scenes like that and the West do nothing effective? Is that our policy? It's not worthy of Europe, it's not worthy of the West, it's not worthy of the United States. Perhaps these pictures will bring people to the realization they can be more effective. Ja, meine ganzen Hoffnungen auf friedliche Reformen, die, die waren dabei, also die gingen dabei im Bach runter. Ne? Also die waren geplatzt aus der Traum. Und das, das Einzige, was wir noch fühlten, das war ohnmächtige Wut in der ganzen DDR. Hilflosigkeit. It is just two days since the killings in Leipzig. And a desperate throng of East Berliners has gathered near the Berlin Wall in the vicinity of the Brandenburg Gate. East German security forces are uneasy. Bitte verlassen Sie den Platz in dieser Richtung. Ich fürchten Sie, dass es hier härtere Auseinandersetzungen gibt? Nein, das weiß ich nicht. Aber es hat sich auf jeden Fall etwas das gehört. Ich würde Sie sofort hier zu verlassen. Bitte verlassen Sie den Platz. On the other side, thousands of West Berliners are seen climbing atop the Berlin Wall. They too are suddenly calling for the reunification of Germany. It is an unprecedented moment. Heavily armed East German border guards find themselves caught between the two groups. Suddenly the guards are overrun as hundreds of East Berliners make a desperate run for the wall. just received a report that at least 23 people have been killed tonight at the Berlin Wall by East German border guards firing into the west. The shootings occurred during a massive demonstration near the Brandenburg Gate involving people from both East and West Berlin. Among the dead is a West German cameraman, Matthias Hedeker, who was shot in the east filming the event. There's no doubt that this unprecedented breach of international law is going to have enormous political and military repercussions in the days and weeks ahead. The Lage is polizeilich here nicht einfach, denn wie Sie sehen, ist die Situation recht gespannt. Wir müssen jetzt auf jeden Fall alles tun, damit sowas wie letzte Nacht nicht normal passiert. Also eine Eskalation und die unkalkulierbaren äh, Folgen, die müssen wir äh, abwenden. With our ambulance, we were the first at the Brandenburg Gate. The shooting across the wall must have been completely indiscriminate. Also face. So face injuries, abdominal wounds. I still see a young man who tried to ligature his girlfriend's bleeding leg. Also, he had a graze at the shoulder himself. We doctors in West Berlin didn't have any experience uh, with uh, gunshot wounds. Peter. Among those who make it over the wall are several East German army soldiers. These two seated here in a West Berlin apartment are the only ones willing to speak openly to the media. I was not going wait for orders to open fire on our own people like our border guards did. I'm not a murderer. I'm a soldier in, a, in the army, in the National People Army. Last night I saw an opportunity to get away and took it along with everybody else. That's all. The Russians, they say they're shooting at imperialists only, at counter-revolutionaries. Yeah, that's bullshit. 
Hoping to end the negative effect that Western news reports are having on world opinion, the East German government cuts off all communications with the West. Foreign journalists are ordered out of the country. Guten Tag, meine Herren. Ich mache Sie darauf aufmerksam, dass Ihre Akkreditierung abgelaufen ist. Sollten Sie irgendwelche Probleme haben, wenden Sie sich an das Ministerium für Auswärtige Angelegenheiten. Ich fordere Sie auf, Ihre Tätigkeit sofort hier einzustellen und mit Ihren Kassetts davon zu fahren. Haben Sie das verstanden? We were all sickened with what was going on in the East. And we couldn't just turn our heads the other way as we had done years ago with Czechoslovakia and Hungary. Seeing these horrors on television night after night gave us a renewed sense of what it meant to be German. At the same time, it was understood, of course, there was very little we could do without our allies. In Paris, French President Mitterrand expresses the grave concerns of Germany's neighbors. Je lui dis, je ne crains pas l'unification qui me paraît légitime. Mais il y a des obligations internationales de toutes sortes auxquelles il faut souscrire si l'on ne veut pas compliquer la situation et créer des tensions inutiles et dangereuses. Ben, je sympathise avec les Allemands. Je... C'est affreux, affreux ce qui leur arrive. J'espère je... qu'ils vont trouver une solution pacifique pour éviter la guerre. Quoi. Moi, je ne vois pas pourquoi les Français iraient donner un coup de main aux Allemands. Après tout, euh, c'est eux qui ont déclenché la guerre. Et maintenant, il faudrait qu'on aille les aider. Moi, je dis non, tout simplement. C'est non. In response to threats from political extremists in West Berlin, vowing to avenge the killings in the East, the Western Allies agree to beef up security. Over 2,000 Allied troops are airlifted from bases in West Germany to reinforce the 12,000-man Berlin Brigade. Two days later, U.S. Secretary of State James Baker arrives in West Berlin for talks with Chancellor Kohl. Kohl is briefed about recent high-level contacts with Soviet opponents to General Soshkin. The following day, the top commander of Soviet forces in East Germany, General Dmitry Leonov, is ushered quietly through Checkpoint Charlie for a secret meeting in West Berlin with Secretary Baker. This was my idea, I'm sorry to say. Uh, we had been receiving intelligence reports that Leonov was not at all happy with the orders that he had been getting from Moscow concerning the crackdown. I thought inviting him over for a little chat might do us all some good. And it might have too if those crackpots hadn't decided to play Rambo. There has been a huge car bomb explosion in West Berlin tonight, just a few hundred yards from American military headquarters. Among the dead is the Soviet commander of military forces in East Germany, General Dmitry Leonov, who is here on a routine visit. The authorities here are telling us that an underground group of West German neo-Nazis has claimed responsibility for the assassination. This latest act of violence just adds to the feeling here that the Berlin crisis is rapidly spinning out of control. We an end of the 40-year-old Soviet Besatzung. Unser Kampf gilt der Einheit unseres Vaterlandes. Am 14. Dezember 1989 haben wir den Kommandeur der russischen Streitkräfte angegriffen. Wir werden weitere Aktionen durchführen, bis unsere Forderungen erfüllt sind. Wir sind ein Volk. Heil! 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 Heil. After the bloody events in Germany, Moscow's new strongman, General Vladimir Soshkin, has granted his first interview since seizing power just ten weeks ago. Earlier today, Soviet Foreign Minister Rubanov blamed the Western news media for fomenting the recent trouble in East Berlin. General. Nu, kak vi možete objasniti nedavni vzriv 
насилия в Берлине. Давайте говорить откровенно, господин Загер. За последнее время мы испытали ряд потрясений, связанные с так называемыми реформами моего предшественника. Данные потрясения были использованы разведслужбой, прессой для дискредитации социализма. Мы были вынуждены принять, предпринять ряд мер. Вот и все. На данный момент миролюбивое человечество озабочено возрождением фашистских и, если вам угодно, неонацистских тенденций в Западной Германии. Вам известно в подтверждение этого зверское убийство генерала Леонова во время мирной миссии с государственным секретарем США. И я думаю, что это является угрозой не только для Востока, но и для Запада. Господин генерал, они здесь всегда сказали, что Запад виноват. Вы действительно знаете, что Запад несет ответственность есть порядки в Восточной Европе. Ситуация не так проста. Но очевидно, что западный сектор Берлина был базой для агрессивных действий против наших социалистических странок. Господин Загер, пришло время найти удовлетворительное решение Берлина. Если вы взглянете на карту, то вы поймете, что так вечно продолжаться не может. Мы должны решить проблему Берлина. И тогда вы можете жить спокойно, и мы будем жить спокойно. Наступит стабильность. И я просто уверен, несмотря на то, что у нас разные системы, но мы можем жить сосуществовать в, третий, в третьем тысячелетии. Within hours of Sochkin's televised threats to West Berlin, NATO's tactical nuclear missiles stationed in West Germany receive orders to go on operational alert. Some damn fool. I can't remember his name. He was an American colonel. Ah, he was perhaps a little overzealous in carrying out his duties. Now, of course, he was entirely within his authority to take this action. Now, this kind of alert status was actually not entirely unusual. It's the circumstances, you see, under which it was done, uh, which made it rather unwise. The Soviet reaction is alarming. 48 submarines are ordered to leave their bases in the Kola Peninsula and move out onto patrol in the North Atlantic. It is the largest submarine operation since World War II. I was surprised that as soon as we proposed the American compromise, they immediately started to play cowboys. Beautiful! Но мы не собирались играть роль индейцев. Reports of these maneuvers, as they are tracked and monitored by the British Navy, raise deep concern in the capitals of Western Europe. NATO heads of state gather for an emergency meeting. The rising military tensions with the Soviet Union and Soshkin's recent remarks concerning Berlin compel the Allies to devise a firm response. Well, I remember we didn't exactly present a United Front. As you know, um, the defense of West Berlin what wasn't the role of NATO and certainly not the role of the Bundeswehr. Uh, only America, Britain, and France could take any action. The rest of the NATO alliance 
um, wanted no part in, in what they thought was a provocative threat to the Soviet Union. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is once again a great honor for me to welcome the heads of state and government to NATO headquarters. This, of course, is our first time in NATO's long history that two such meetings have been held within a single 12-month period. Uh, let us just say that it wasn't our finest hour, in spite of the public statements about how united we all were. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. I would be glad to uh, take some questions. Mr. President, Mr. President, do you believe that Sashkin may be preparing to take some form of military action against NATO territory? I can't predict what he's going to do, but I can tell you uh, that we are, we are uh, continuing to implement our forces and we are continuing to uh, prepare for any eventuality. Sensing weakness among the Western Allies, the Soviets keep up the pressure sending a squadron of long-range bombers into U.S. airspace. It is a public show of force designed to rattle the nerves of the American public. U.S. fighter jets intercepted four Soviet bombers off Alaska earlier today. Photographs released this evening by the Pentagon give a hint, perhaps, of what the Soviets think of us these days. On January the 15th, Western leaders reluctantly give the order to begin a massive airlifting of Allied forces into West Germany. 5,000 troops arrive every day. Despite the extraordinary size of the deployment, official announcements call it a strictly defensive move. Meanwhile, in West Berlin, the reinforced Berlin Brigade is fully mobilized and put onto the highest state of alert. Forty years of peace and stability in a divided Europe is beginning to fall apart. Fearful and uncertain of the West's political and military intentions, Soshkin chooses to seize the initiative. General Soshkin создал чрезвычайный комитет для обсуждения ответов на явную угрозу со стороны Запада. Нам были представлены несколько военных планов по защите Европы, которые разрабатывались нашими военными в течение последних 30 лет. Один из них сразу же приглянулся генералу Сошкину. Это был превентивный план по предотвращению проникновения НАТО в нашу сферу влияния. И назывался он Операция Гром. Должен сказать, что я был несколько шокирован масштабами этой операции. Она мне даже показалась актом сумасшествия. Но в конце концов, разница между гениальностью и сумасшествием заключается в том, победили вы или нет. Do what you yourselves say you want to do. Dialogue, discuss, do not use force, because we have an awful lot at stake in the U.S.-Soviet relationship. In the area around Berlin, four Soviet and East German tank divisions move to seal off all access to the western sector of the city. Soshkin is gambling that he can now freely regain his grip on Eastern Europe and perhaps even demand a favorable resolution to the division of Berlin. Within an hour, all three surface routes connecting the divided city to West Germany are closed. Two million West German citizens are now blockaded behind the Iron Curtain, hostage to Soshkin's political demands. In the sky, the Soviet Air Force vows to shoot down any aircraft that dares to enter East German airspace. 
NATO can do little more than patrol the border and monitor the situation. We have uh, multiple strange attacks. Excuse me, uh, what do you think about the blockade? Um, it's a very strange feeling because in a way everything still seems so normal. But um, I guess everybody hopes it will blow over in a few days. I'm not a big fan of the Americans, so I hate to say this. But I think the United States is probably our only hope we have at the moment. Of course our hearts go out to the hostages and to their families. But our policy cannot change, and it will not change. America and the world will not be blackmailed by this ruthless policy. The Prime Minister. What I have said, I have had with full legal authority. I have made the position clear, and I do not think there's anything further I can add. I am not prepared for those reasons to limit our legitimate freedom of action. Mr. Speaker, such a man must be stopped, and we shall persevere until he is. Great Britain is the first NATO country to begin a full-scale military mobilization. Troops and equipment are rapidly deployed to bases in West Germany. Over 300,000 reservists are ordered to report for duty. Draft 2815, it's going to Germany. That's at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Will you catch it? 242348. Why don't they get round a table, come up with an agreement and sort it out? It's not fair. People have got their fingers pressed on that button. You know that, don't you? So get it sorted. My boy is over there, and I mean, my boy means the world to me. He's defending West Germany, where well, they should be here, back in Britain, looking after us. I think what Thatcher's doing is, is crazy. I mean, it was one thing going up against the, the Argentines in the, in the Falklands, but against the Soviets, it's a different match entirely. Throughout Great Britain, frightening civil defence preparations are put into effect. A nuclear explosion produces intense heat. This can get through unprotected windows and set fire to things in your home. Across Western Europe, and most notably in West Germany, military bases are besieged by angry demonstrators demanding a peaceful settlement. On Wall Street, the New York Stock Exchange echoes the public mood, suffering its worst one day loss ever. I think Soskin should try marching into Times Square. We teach that prick a lesson he never forget. You know what I mean? We kick his ugly butt right back to Moscow. I hope Soskin's not kidding around. I hope he's not a, a, just a total fool. Because Bush, perfect emperor, is doing what you're supposed to do, I, I think. I don't think he's, he's playing a chess game. I think he's playing, I don't know, the negotiation the hard way, you know? On the eastern seaboard of the United States, a convoy of over 100 ships stocked with military supplies for Europe is made ready to cross the Atlantic. Nearby, a huge naval escort assembles to provide security. Their purpose is to fully supply NATO's forces in Europe, which remain hopelessly outnumbered by the armies of the Warsaw Pact. As the American convoy moves out to sea, Soviet Foreign Minister Yuri Rubanov holds a dramatic televised press conference in the Kremlin. Soviet Union was forced to take the following measures for the protection of peace and security in Europe. At this moment, our fleet in the Southern Atlantic is preparing a zone of 
показанные вот на этой карте. За пределами этой зоны мы будем действовать в интересах нашей национальной безопасности. Любая попытка игнорировать эту меру будет расценена как враждебный акт, и наши вооруженные силы примут соответствующие контрмеры. Я хочу добавить, что советское руководство твердо занимает следующую позицию. Все конфликты в Центральной Европе должны решаться за столом переговоров, а не на поле брани. The American convoy, joined by an assortment of British anti-submarine warships, closes in on the Soviet exclusion zone. Last-ditch diplomatic efforts between the White House and the Kremlin fail to reach a compromise. Out in the Atlantic, every hour brings the two sides closer to a direct military confrontation. We were left with only two alternatives at this point. Turning back the convoy would have meant abandoning the principles of the NATO alliance and leaving Europe to the mercy of the likes of Soshkin. Yet, if we continued on our present course, we ran the risk of starting a goddamn war. So given the circumstances as they appeared at that time, I still believe that the president made the correct decision. We're dealing with Hitler revisited, a totalitarianism and a brutality that is naked and unprecedented in modern times. And that must not stand. We cannot talk about compromise when you have that kind of behavior going on this very minute. At dawn, the Soviet northern fleet moves its forces into position. Beneath the ocean, 68 Soviet submarines receive orders from Moscow to attack the convoy. <laughs> Within hours, nearly a quarter of the convoy is lost to Soviet rocket, torpedo and land-based air attacks. Rescue teams struggle to save the survivors. American and British warships counter-attack with strikes against Soviet land-based backfire bombers, submarines in the Soviet Northern Fleet. Aboard the three American aircraft carriers in the area, 144 fighter jets take to the air. Soviet gunners, seamen and fighter pilots struggle to defend themselves. But they are quickly overwhelmed. As dusk falls, NATO has won the battle and the sea lanes remain open. But the Third World War has begun.
are standing in front of the United Nations where a huge crowd of peace demonstrators has gathered. They are burning American flags and even an effigy of President Bush. As the Security Council meets inside an emergency session, the situation out here is absolute pandemonium. Colleagues, we meet at the hinge of history. If he should win this struggle, then there will be no peace, only the prospect of more conflict and a far wider war. As I said earlier today, we must remember the lesson of the 1930s, and aggression must not be rewarded. And I give the floor to the distinguished Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Господа члены Совета Безопасности, продолжающаяся мобилизация войск НАТО в Западной Германии является умышленной провокацией и представляет собой прямую угрозу миру и безопасности в Европе. Советский Союз не может оставаться в стороне и игнорировать эту угрозу, которая является опасной как для нас, так и для наших союзников по Варшавскому договору. В свете происшедшего за последние сутки становится очевидно, что мы не стремимся развязать еще одну мировую войну. Но если нам ее навяжут, то уклоняться от нее мы не собираемся. Должен напомнить уважаемому государственному секретарю Соединенных Штатов, что все, кто в прошлом на нас нападал, очень плохо кончили. Fellow members of the council, we are at a crossroads. We continue to seek a diplomatic solution. You can choose peace by respecting the will of the international community. But if you fail to do so, you will risk all. The choice is yours. This meeting is adjourned. The following days see a vast mobilization of Soviet forces. Special airborne units and military supplies are flown round the clock to East Germany, adding to the 400,000 Soviet troops already stationed there. and other heavy equipment are moved in by train from Poland. In the West, shiploads of military supplies from the United States begin to arrive at ports all along the North Sea coast of Western Europe. Within a few weeks, Allied forces will be at full strength, ready, if called upon, to liberate West Berlin. In West Germany, the government is preparing for the worst. The few existing shelters that are designed to save people from a nuclear attack undergo inspection. Ja, die momentane Lage ist so, dass wir den Bunker fast einsatzbereit haben, dass der Diesel vorgewärmt wird. Die Lüftungsanlage, man hört das schon, sie läuft schon. Ja, die Kollegen gucken jetzt, dass die Zählwerke am Eingang äh, richtig funktionieren, dass sie richtig laufen, ähm, wo wir dann sehen können, wie viele Leute wir schon aufgenommen haben. Dann, ne? Und äh, wir können ungefähr 1500 Leute hier aufnehmen. Wir haben 500 Betten, die wir hier haben, 1000 Plätze zum Sitzen. Und im achtstündigen Wechsel wird hier äh, geschlafen und gesessen. Dann, ne? Und äh, die, wenn das Zählwerk die entsprechende Menge anzeigt, ca. 1500, dann wird automatisch die, die, die Tür am Zählwerk geschlossen und auch der Schleusenstand schließt dann die Schleuse, sodass wir dann hier hermetisch abgeriegelt sind, dann, dass hier auch kein Mensch mehr reinkommt. In East Germany, too, the government is preparing its citizens for war. Seit Jahren verteidigt das Kollektiv mit Erfolg die höchste Stufe der Einsatzbereitschaft. 
eben deshalb werden wir... Zivilverteidigung, das war doch bloß Propaganda. Ich habe doch selbst also bei der ZV mitgemacht. Bunker gab es noch für die Bonzen, schon weil das Baumaterial knapp war. Ja, und dann hatten wir also ständig irgendwelche Übungen, sind dann mit Geigerzählern durch die Gegend gerannt und haben Wasser in Zürchen geübt ja, und so weiter. Also ich fand das damals ganz schön makaber, irgendwie. I was asked to go to Moscow to see if we could help sort things out before the, well, before the you-know-what hit the fan. Basically, we were willing to help the Soviets slowly withdraw from Eastern Europe in an orderly fashion. We were also ready to agree to a very lengthy timetable for the eventual reunification of Germany. I mean, my God, I mean, uh, uh, the party was basically over for them in Eastern Europe. Uh, all we were doing was trying to make this process as easy as possible for all concerned. So, with this proposal in hand, I was ushered right into the heart of the beast. I went up some sort of back entrance and right into the general's private headquarters, where I finally met face to face with a man himself. Я лично видел все это представление. Джейкобс напоминал мне скорее шустрого американского продавца, а не дипломата. Он прекрасно понимал, что его товар нас совсем не интересует. На такое открыто империалистическое, на такое высокомерное предложение со стороны американцев генерал Сошкин мог ответить только одним словом – нет. That's about all I remember him saying during the whole meeting. Yet. Yet. It's just like in the movies. It was hopeless. With the crisis in Europe deepening, the West German parliament earlier today officially declared a state of emergency. Military command has been transferred to Chancellor Helmut Kohl. According to emergency laws set up under the West German Federal Constitution, far-reaching authority will be given to the police and the military for the maintenance of public order and security. In the coming days, private vehicles will be restricted from main roads and autobahns. All civilian air traffic, both in and out of West Germany, has been suspended as of six o'clock this evening. Now at last, the government woke up. In Western Berlin, after six weeks of the blockade, there was not really nothing more to eat. With the state food reserve running down and water and electricity rationed. And in Western Germany, we thought people were sitting high and dry. But that seemed to be over now, too. At airports across Europe, thousands of passengers desperate to flee the crisis find themselves stranded. Präsidentin, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren, ich habe Verständnis für Angst, die manchen bei uns erfasst. Und dennoch gilt, Frieden um jeden Preis kann und darf es nicht geben. Outside on the streets, the demonstrators have a different view. In all our war plans, we'd always been a little anxious, to say the least, at the prospect of a battle between two German armies, a war brother against brother. But you must remember that to most of our young men, East Germany was as foreign as, uh, as Poland or Russia. However, we suffered quite a large number of um, young man refusing their call to service. Company, wo die Gebäude antreten? Company, in Linie, antreten! Bei der Bade meldet sich wie befohlen. Bei der Heck meldet sich wie befohlen. Bei der Schommers meldet sich wie befohlen. NATO forces are fully mobilized. Employing the strategy of forward defense, they concentrate their positions right up to the inter-German border. Here in Mödlerreuth, a small village straddling the Iron Curtain, the situation is the same as in many places in the area. 
The daily military maneuvers take a heavy toll among civilians on both sides, who are under strict government orders to stay put. Stay put. As they watch thousands of battle-ready Allied troops move up to the front, the Kremlin knows that time is running out. Here in Lower Saxony, near the border with East Germany, we're witnessing an impressive buildup of British, French, and American ground forces. If Washington gives the okay to begin a military advance to free West Berlin, these troops are likely to be the first into battle. Everyone here is hoping and praying for some sort of diplomatic solution to end this crisis. But with the blockade of West Berlin entering its fifth week and Sashkin remaining defiant, some form of military action is becoming increasingly likely. I'm John Itzti reporting from West Germany. Es muss um den 1. März gewesen sein, da habe ich den Genossen Staatsratsvorsitz an die Front begleitet. Er wollte den Piloten unserer Luftstreitkräfte Mut zu sprechen. Ihr versteht es richtig, Genossen. Für uns kommt es darauf an, den Frieden zu sichern und den Krieg zu bekämpfen, jederzeit bereit und fähig zu sein, jedem Aggressor eine vernichtende Abfuhr zu erteilen. Er konnte die Männer ungeheuer begeistern. Das war aber dann auch der letzte schöne Tag, an den ich mich erinnern kann. East Germany, too, is fully mobilized. The blockade of West Berlin has failed to divide the Western Allies, whose armed forces now appear ready to strike. Honecker, meanwhile, nervously awaits orders from Moscow. Я помню, мы сидели с генералом Сошкиным в его кабинете наедине. Он посмотрел на меня и сказал, гроза поднимается. Потом он подошел к окну и долго стоял и смотрел на улицу. Я понимал, что он имеет в виду. Операция «Гром» вступала в заключительную стадию. С этого момента генерал Сошкин переехал в наш штаб за городом. И практически я его больше не видел до самого конца. The attack begins where it is least expected. A daylight naval assault along the Baltic coast of West Germany, backed up by heavy Soviet bombing. Within hours, 12,000 men of the Soviet Baltic Fleet and the East German Navy stormed the beaches. Heavy equipment is moved ashore. Meeting little resistance, they gradually make their way inland. NATO throws much of its available forces north to hold the line. West German, British and Dutch units move in and are the first to engage the enemy advance.
Backing them up is the newly arrived 40,000 man 3rd U.S. Corps, moving up rapidly from ports along the North Sea. What are they going to find on the other side of that hill? I don't know, but we're repairing for what's over there on the other side of that hill. Do you think they've got more than we've got there? It's, it's hard to say. You, you, you never know what you'll need the press of it, and then you scope it out whether you need more reinforcements or not. We do, we got them behind us. The news from the front is grim. Military authorities indicate that the massive Soviet and East German military advance is meeting fierce resistance from NATO forces. Casualties are reported to be heavy on both sides. All talks have now broken down, and there are mounting fears that an escalation towards a nuclear conflict may be inevitable. Nearly 1,500 Warsaw Pact troops are estimated to have lost their lives in the first few hours of the war. Casualties among the NATO forces have also mounted to well over a thousand dead. We lost three fourths of our men out here today. Flight one two. See if you can get attack helicopters and artillery support in that area. The area that I'm getting worried about is up on the north here. If they flank us to the north and cross the core boundary and make it, they've outflanked this whole area. The naval assault along the Baltic coast turns out to be a diversion to the main enemy thrust. That begins 18 hours later, striking directly through the heart of central Germany. Die große Bodenoffensive begann am Morgengrauen des 13. März. Ich führte ein Panzerregiment der 3. NVA-Armee. Gemeinsam mit der ersten sowjetischen Gardepanzerarmee sind wir als erste bei Fulda über die Grenze in die BRD vorgestoßen. Six divisions with over 1,600 tanks and 100,000 soldiers lead the advance. Unser Auftrag war es, mit einem blitzartigen Stoß nach Westen bis zum Rhein zu kommen. Als Operationsplan sollten die NATO-Kräfte in zwei Teile gespalten und unterwegs alle größeren Luftwaffenstützpunkte vernichtet werden. Danach, so die Zielstellung, sollte unsere politische Führung Friedensverhandlungen anbieten. Nach sowjetischen Schätzungen, nach denen unsere Planung aufgestellt war, war die Operation in etwa zehn Tagen abzuschließen. The attack is supported by massive Soviet airstrikes. Hundreds of fighter jets and bombers take part in an all-out effort to destroy NATO's air force on the ground. Despite years of preparation, the suddenness and magnitude of the Soviet attack overwhelms NATO defenses. large part of NATO's air force is damaged or destroyed. Runways are rendered inoperable. Twenty percent of the attacking air force is shot down. In just 36 hours of war, both sides have expended a major part of their available arsenals. A total of nearly 30,000 military casualties are reported.
crash units are unable to care for all the wounded. Those who are still able to be moved are transported away from the front lines. Residential areas in the vicinity of NATO military installations are also hit hard. Poland, these people, they are safe in their government bunker. I think they should come around and have a look here, what's going on. Official estimates put the initial number of civilian casualties at over 3,500. West German air defenses do their best to warn of the air raids. But the sirens are of little help, as people soon discover there is only enough shelter space for 3% of the population. Military facilities around Hamburg are under attack tonight. Air defense batteries have been set up all over the city, and the people here are desperately seeking any shelter they can find. The situation near the front line deteriorates into chaos, as frightened civilians and military forces become entangled in the retreat. In the face of the oncoming Soviet advance, orders are given to blow most of the river crossing. We're going to stop it. We have to stop it. This is a critical area. If they uh, seize this terrain right here, and they seize the whole, uh, the whole line. The whole line would collapse if they took this particular uh, terrain here. As the Soviets continue their advance, any hope of liberating West Berlin begins to fade. Early in March, I was assigned to a new auxiliary hospital. People were getting more and more hysterical each day. Soon the Russians will arrive, then the atom bombs will come. That was a general feeling. Giving out tranquilizers was about all I could do. Throughout West Germany comes the beginnings of social breakdown. 20 million automobiles jam the roads as people violate the emergency laws in an attempt to flee. We have unconfirmed reports that Soviet and East German ground forces have advanced to within just 10 miles of the city. In a public statement released earlier today, the British commander of the Northern Army Group, General Sir George Winthrop, vowed to repel the attack at any cost. When asked if that meant he was prepared to use nuclear weapons, he offered no comment. In the forward areas, town after town is reduced to rubble. I was preparing myself for the worst, I must say. Now, every scenario we had run on this kind of situation always came out the same way. At a certain point, we would be forced use nuclear weapons or surrender our country to the enemy. This was the unavoidable strategy for our defense. And now I came to the conclusion that we would soon have no other alternative. Our plans for starting such an attack called for approximately 35 nuclear devices in the first salvo. A half of this explosive power was targeted on German soil, I might add. However, our conventional forces were granted another 24 hours before these plans were to become operational. 24 hours to turn the tide of the war. Striking north through the mountains of Czechoslovakia, Allied jets, including several American stealth fighters, attack and destroy the Soviet command and control headquarters at Legnitsia in southern Poland. Similar targets in East Germany are also taken out, critically weakening the Soviets' highly centralized command structure. 
With supplies and materiel on both sides reaching critical levels, a final decisive air battle develops, one that will determine the outcome of the war. It is a fight to the death. Suffering extraordinary losses, the Soviets lose vital control of the airspace over Eastern Europe. Schlimmsten war, dass wir durch den Angriff auf Legnitzer unsere Luftunterstützung und unsere Kommunikationsanrichtungen verloren hatten. Außerdem waren unsere Nachschublinien unterbrochen durch die Aufständischen in Polen. The advance quickly grinds to a halt. Außerdem, der historischen Wahrheit zu Liebe muss ich Ihnen sagen, dass ein großer Teil unseres Geräts überhaupt nicht gefechtsklar war. Nicht so sehr bei uns, aber bei den Sowjets waren zum Beispiel von den Panzern etwa nur 60 Prozent einsatzbereit. Ich war hier vorne mit dabei und ich kann Ihnen sagen, wir blieben reihenweise liegen. Wie lange Enten, es war vorbei. Having penetrated just 50 miles into West Germany, the Soviet and East German forces are pushed back. With supplies cut off and command and control in chaos, the inherent technological weakness of the Warsaw Pact is now fully exposed. With total air superiority, NATO bombers, ground forces and helicopter gunships operate with impunity against the highly vulnerable Soviet tanks. The East German army in particular suffers heavy losses, and there are reports of mass desertion. The Tilly abbrach die Versorgung völlig zusammen. Sie hat nichts mehr. Naja, irgendwie kannte man das ja. Die Produktion, die wurde von einem Tag auf den anderen völlig umgestellt. Und wir haben dann nur noch für die Armee gearbeitet. Und die ganze Zeit, da hatten wir nur einen Gedanken. Ne? Weg aus der Stadt, bloß raus hier. Denn wenn das richtig losgeht, dann hat man da überhaupt keine Chance. All along the entire front, Soviet Army units are in full retreat. The East Germans are now left to fend for themselves. Ich habe mich mit meiner Frau aufs Land durchgeschlagen zu Verwandten in der Nähe von Magdeburg. Ich glaube, auf der LPG gab es wenigstens noch was zu essen. Und die meiste Zeit haben wir im Keller gesessen. Und dann, als wir die ersten amerikanischen Panzer gehört haben, also die Kanonenschüsse, da habe ich sie angeguckt und sie hat mich angeguckt und wir haben halt gedacht, jetzt haben wir es hinter uns. 
Ja, dann kam es richtig dicker. Ganz schön. On March 25, 1990, the main NATO advance crosses the river Elbe and moves deeper into East Germany in a headlong rush towards Berlin. East Germany was disintegrating before our very eyes. You had armed gunmen running around who, 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 who seemed to be launching a violent overthrow of whatever was left of the central government. In the midst of all this, we completed the Berlin operation, while the Soviets uh, were retreating back to the Polish border. It was absolute chaos. In the areas surrounding the divided city, NATO units are pinned down in bitter house-to-house -house fighting. <laughs> Less than 24 hours since crossing the Elbe, NATO forces enter the outskirts of Berlin. As I said earlier, we do not have confirmation of all of these reports. It's a very fast-moving uh, situation, and things are still in a certain degree of flux, but it would appear that events are at least for now moving in a positive direction, and we continue to hope that this will end in a clear and positive result. West Berlin is liberated. With celebrations going on into the night, the people of West Berlin have much to rejoice, including the hope that the reunification of Germany is finally at hand. Ja, die letzten Tage waren schlimm. Honecker. Ich weiß nicht warum, der wollte die Tatsachen einfach nicht sehen. Es war vorbei, aber er nahm es nicht zur Kenntnis. Die Sowjets hatten uns den ganzen Schlamassel eingebrockt, die waren für uns erledigt. the Soviet Union. Opposition to Sochkin's regime has now taken to the streets. From East Germany to Central Asia, the Soviet Empire is imploding in violence and insurrection. As the situation spirals out of control, Sochkin becomes increasingly desperate. There was a consensus among most of our allies to get the hell out of there as soon as possible. After all, with the liberation of West Berlin, our military objectives had been achieved. Only the West Germans were calling upon us to push all the way to the Polish border to complete the reunification of Germany, to finish the job as they saw it. Only the president felt that it was very important to signal to the Soviets that we had no intention of taking any further offensive action against them. Sochkin, по-видимому, был убежден, что американцы либо дойдут до самой Москвы, либо воспользуются ситуацией и нанесут по нам первый ядерный удар. Ну, теперь вы можете думать все, что угодно, но в конце концов, даже параноики имеют реальных врагов. Hoping to terrorize his enemies, Sochkin decides to utilize Russia's nuclear arsenal in a show of force. On the line, sir. This is the SDL. British alarm level three. British alarm level three. The single target of this Soviet weapon is tracked at 170 miles off the east coast of Great Britain, out over the North Sea.
awaiting the detonation, British and American strategic forces are instructed to make ready for nuclear war. Soshkin has shown the world his willingness to use nuclear weapons. Nobody knows how far he may go. You, uh, you just can't imagine the pressure that the president was under. There was no time for negotiation consultation. There was no time to consider all of the information that we were receiving concerning the, uh, the activities of the Soviet strategic rocket forces. We had a hair trigger reaction built into the system. Human intervention at this critical stage was a mere formality because any delay could mean, any delay could mean annihilation. This is Daniel Shore at the Pentagon. Sources in the Defense Department are telling me that at this very moment, active preparations are in progress for initiating what is known around here as the PSYOP, that is the Single Integrated Operation Plan. That is the secret war plan for launching up to 12,000 nuclear attacks on targets in the Soviet Union. With news that America's nuclear command has taken to the air, awaiting orders from the president, American television reports have now become the Soviet's most trusted source of military intelligence. Я до сих пор убежден, если бы тогда Сошкин не запаниковал, это был бы конец. Но видите ли, дело в том, что мы начали получать тревожную военную информацию о том, что американцы первыми готовятся нанести по нам ядерный удар. К тому же компьютеры наших ПВО были на высоте и начали выдавать неверную информацию. Ни люди, ни техника не были готовы к таким напряжениям. The Soviet strategic rocket forces are given orders to launch. sound it just really came down to kill or be killed may God have mercy on us all in accordance with the single integrated operation plan the Western powers see no alternative but to react in kind Doors open at 30 TG, we have a 30 TG. Doors open. Roger, standing by release. The command is out now. Doors 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 out The two superpowers have a combined total of over 25,000 nuclear weapons at their disposal. no further historical record of what happens next.